From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening of the evenings LA with incredible great news about your fourth stimulus check update of 2021. With the guy at issue, Joe Manchin minutes ago saying he'll pass the fourth stimulus recall. Uh, wait, which Joe Manchin is this? <laughs> yeah, the same guy from Sunday. So I told you he was going to flip, and he did. And today he announced minutes ago, Monday afternoon, that while he said on Sunday, I don't want to ever hear about this ever again, he does. And he spoke about it on Monday afternoon and says he'll pass the force on recon. Perhaps a slightly different version or dramatically different version of the Build Back Better Act, maybe with another name like the Mansion Act, but he'll pass it. So what happened? Well, guess what? He Wells goes after the White House staff in a series of new comments says they're the problem. And I've been discussing this since last weekend on this channel. Several provisions of this recon they have not fixed and continue to not fix. And he says there's a path to getting this done. Wow. Meantime, Chuck Schumer earlier today, his first detail on Morning Daylight, says we're calling the vote. Hashtag Chuck call the vote. A detailed hashtag campaign launched by this channel last Wednesday worked. Later, Schumer says the vote will be calling. What happens tomorrow, Tuesday, with perhaps the most important day of the entire week when a Zoom chat will happen with all Democratic senators? Will Joe Manchin participate to determine what they're going to do the first and second week of January? Wow. Suddenly, the guy who said he would not do the recon on Sunday says today he'll do the recon. Now, today, Joe Manchin says the problems at Hayen are not the president. It's the staff of the White House. They're not fixing the language. Who said that? I think the guy in purple who's wearing black today said that as well. The guy who hadn't called the vote and had been holding up the problem since May, Chuck Schumer's now calling the vote. Wow, <laughs> it's as though I could just sort of plus everything and rewind and say, this is what I said to do, go do it, and now they're doing it. In tonight's recording, we're going to go over also Pranella Jalapal's comments because she got a phone call today. From who? Not me. <laughs> I would have had a few words to say. Joe Manchin. And she had some comments as well. It's a big recording. There's a lot of breaking news. You see it's a slightly different broadcast. This is a special report. Live from Santa Monica, direct from Santa Monica this, this evening, and it starts right now. Hey, good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful evening across the board. And this is Evenings LA. In a special report tonight, as no time is at point more important than ever in the now, to in the Force and Check update to go over the latest comments from Joe Manchin. Not the Sunday comments, the Monday afternoon comments. A lot has happened, and in a night like this, I thought, I can't stay on the usual schedule of going over every check and third stimulus. I got to give another special report because there's a breaking details today as well. Let me tell you first what happened minutes ago. Joe Manchin appeared on a local uh, uh, broadcast channel in West Virginia and clarified his comments from the Fox News interview last Sunday and said, no, I'll do the first summer's recon. I always would do it. But the reason why I said no on Sunday is the, kind of the way it's written now, it was being shoved down my throat. And I said, I'm not doing that thing. I'll do something else, but not that. Now, does that sound exactly how he phrased on Sunday? Not exactly. But I had told you that was my interpretation of his Sunday words. And guess what? I was right. He now says, I would do the Force Summers Recon. I always said I would do the Force Summers Recon. I wasn't going to do that Force Summers Recon because it needs changes. And guess what? The problem at hand was not himself, not the White House, not Chuck Schumer, not Bernie Sanders. It's the staff. And I had been telling you this for a while. Let's go back. You know, before I press record tonight on tonight's evening's LA broadcast, I thought, do I make this a defense of Joe Manchin video? And I said, no, because I see the Pramila Jalapal interview that came out just minutes ago, so I can't do that. But I've also shown you that there's two sides of what's going on. It's not just the world versus Joe Manchin. It's not. And guess what? Joe Manchin does not have the press core of the White House. He does not have a press team like the press core of the White House, which has hundreds and hundreds of press people that can literally beat up someone. 
And that's what he says he was the victim of. Let me go over what's new tonight, and boy, it's shocking. First, Joe Manchin explains his interview comments from the Fox News interview in a new interview tonight, on Monday afternoon, in West Virginia. He explains the context, the comments, the substance, uh, and virtually everything you had been wondering. Then we have a new interview in from Pramila Jalapal because she got a phone call from Joe Manchin. Yeah. And finally, we have the latest details that happened this morning. You saw first on Morning's LA with Chuck Schumer calling the vote in January. Let's go over the latest, column, latest details tonight. Breaking news from Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin appearing in this new interview tonight in West Virginia says, when I said on Fox News, I'm not doing that, I didn't mean I'm not going to do anything. I'm just not doing that body of legislation. You know, the, let's say 3,000 pages. I'm not doing that 3,000 3, pages. I'll do another version of 3,000 pages, but I won't do that. Ironically, that's exactly what I told you this weekend. I had told you, even before Joe Manchin made the comments, that he has always said he'll do the recon. He's said it in writing. He's put in writing. He has written it. He has said it on broadcast media on many different channels. He'll do the force of recon. He just won't do that version. So what's at issue here? Why did he phrase it wrong? He, in a way, almost admits perhaps he used the wrong words to describe what he's against. He's against that version of the Build Back at Better Act. He's not against the magnitude of it. He's just against what that thing is, and it needs to be something else. When, What caused him to perhaps do that Fox News interview on Sunday? Well, we now know. He said that he just couldn't take the beatings anymore. And he specifically uses very abrupt words. He basically says the White House staff was beating him up. And he says, I'm from West Virginia, and you don't win by beating someone up. He said he portrays the White House staff as a bunch of uh, hooligans, as, as a bunch of basically thugs that go in and really uh, go after you unless you do exactly what, you want, what they want you to do. And if you don't, then they do worse. And so what does he describe it tonight? So he says that he has expressed them for several months, several provisions he will not do, and several provisions that need to be fixed. I've detailed them on this channel for months. I've detailed that the paid leave he's against, and the White House took it out, put it back in, and made it bigger. That's very spiteful by the White House. I mean, you're being told by the guy, I'm not going to do this recon if the paid leave is in there, but I'll do the other 3,000 pages, and you put it back in there, and you beef it up. Okay. Then we have those provisions that aren't right. And boy, uh, this is where I just want to fume and get angry. You know what I do more than anything else is numbers. I do numbers, and you and I do numbers as well. We cash checks, not track checks. And I've been telling you since day one, there's something wrong with this one-year versus 20-year programs. These programs are supposed to be one year. They're supposed to be one year. You see me when I record on air, they're supposed to be one year. And back in April, I told you that the White House originally wanted 20-year programs, portrayed it as generational changing, a lifetimes of changes for generations to come. And I said, how can it be if it's one year? It's a 12-month it's a program. Then it went from 7 trillion, which was 20 years, then 10 years at 3 trillion, then uh, the current version, 1.7, 1.9, 1.5, which is one year. And guess what? The White House still kept on using that language for many generations to come. Life-changing, uh, uh, historic changes, lifetime changes, permanent changes. What, 12 months is not permanent changes. So as a guy that knows numbers and also that pays attention to words, I thought there was something wrong. Well, and I've been reporting this on this channel for months. Joe Manchin went right back to that tonight. He said the same thing tonight that he did see in the Fox News interview, that he had addressed to the White House that there are programs in there that are supposed to be one year and have used tricky wording by staffers to masquerade it as one year when they're really 10 or 20 year programs. Now, this is very important for you. Why? Because you are sitting here trying to get as much money in your wallet from this recon, every penny you can get. And then the White House says, you know, I'll get $3,600 per child, per family, for the CTC, for the child tax credit, for one more year. And you're sitting back and sitting, wait a second, is Allied saying that, that maybe they're going to give um, $65,000 per child? $60,000, we're going to do 20 years per child? Well, if it's it's actually 18 years, from birth to 18 years, that's nearly $60,000? And you're giving me Zippo? 
and you're giving to a newborn child that's not even here watching the video, $60,000 in the next 20 years, you're not giving me anything. That's not fair. And it's not fair that I get taxed to pay for that child's money. And, and that's not anything I agree to. And that's not something I think Joe Manchin should agree to or anyone else should agree to. So I've been detailing that on this channel for months that someone in the White House is doing this trickery. Guess who's now saying it tonight? Joe Manchin again. He said this is trickery. And he has confirmation across the board. He has confirmation from press. He has confirmation from me. He has confirmation from the Congressional Budget Office, a nonpartisan organization that looked at the recon and said, these programs are not one year. They're 20 years. And he says, this is trickery. As Mitch McConnell said, not that he's the virtue of, of rationality, but he said Joe Manchin correctly opposed provisions in this recon that were that use tricky language that were going to run for decades to go. Now, if you're having a negotiations with a holdout guy like Joe Manchin and your White House staff, what do you do? You try to trick him? You try to trick him? I've been detailing the tensions between Joe Manchin and the staff of the White House trying to trick him or not try to trick us with tricky language since Labor Day. Remember that when the president invited Joe Manchin to the White House, uh, to the White House uh, uh, mansion in Delaware? And Joe Manchin said, the language in here is tricky. Now, let's understand a couple things. Joe Manchin wants you to have checks. He wants you to have $15,000 of checks, so long as they're one year. He's not opposed to an MSC, a monthly IRS stimulus check. He is not opposed to the uh, the housing relief that'll pay you upwards of $15,000. He's not opposed to the first-time home purchase. He's not opposed to these provisions. But what does the White House want you to think? That's what Joe Manchin says in this new interview tonight. He says after he said, you know what? I'm not going to do 20 years of $3,600 a child. That's ridiculousness. That's $60,000 per child. I'm not going to pay a child $60,000. I'm not going to run our national death up for $60,000 a child. And I'm not going to be tricked by language that looks like it's one year, $3,600, when it's six, 10, 20 years of $60,000. Guess what he says? He says the White House went after him. The press corps, the teal monster. Yeah, she's back. <laughs> He says the teal monster went back after her and basically said, issued press releases everywhere. Joe Manchin doesn't want to help little children in this country. Joe Manchin doesn't want to give any child tax credit. Joe Manchin wants to leave young children in poverty while he drives a Maserati. That's not what he said. And I had told you, I saw this coming out last Thursday. Remember Thursday last week, President issued a press release saying, I'm not doing the recon uh, for voting next week. And name dropped Joe Manchin three times. I thought, that's a lot. That's pretty heavy-handed for a White House. That's very heavy-handed for, for a president. I mean, you know, maybe Donald Trump would do that with, you know, someone that would go against him, like a Lindsey Graham for a second or so. But Joe Biden, he portrays himself as sort of a level-headed, sort of sensible, kind, sweet guy, going really after one guy with three name drops in a press release. And then... Uh, and then Sunday, the press secretary basically calling Joe Manchin the biggest liar that ever walked on the planet, which may be the case. But let's make clear that there are provisions in this recon that are messed up. They're messed up because they're written wrong. And you've been seeing them on this channel for months. We're trying to get every penny you can get. We're trying to get every dollar to you as across the board. And the people want to get you that money that you want to advocate for that MSC, those are the people who do not disagree. Let's look at those people you want to advocate to. Casey Coons, Warren Wine, and Sanders and Sumer. Let's look at them right now. Um, they want you to have those. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Like this video and consider becoming a member across the board. Let's look at those centers uh, in this incredible recon. Because guess what? They want you to have money, but they don't intend you to have $60,000. It's not their intention to give you this type of money. And who are they? Uh, give that uh, give children that type of money. Who are they? Casey, Coons, Warren, Wyden, Sanders, and Schumer. Now, no one in this group intends to give sixty thousand dollars or twenty years of checks to little children. They just don't. So, where is this coming from? It's not coming from this group that wants to give you an MSC that would pay you six months at two thousand dollars the first month and thousand dollars thereafter that is not twenty thousand dollars that's not thirty thousand dollars that is um about seven thousand dollars they want to give you seven thousand dollars they do not want to give little children sixty thousand dollars over 20 years so if it's not them 
if it's not the House, then who is it? It's the White House staff. It's the Brian DCs of the world. It's the White House staff. And that's what Joe Manchin is saying tonight is that, hey, I, I want to give $3,600 for one more year for the child tax credit, but I don't want to do 20 years of it or 10 years of it. And I don't like then someone saying, here's Joe Manchin. He wants little children to starve to death. Oh, that is, that's dagger. That's not cool. That's really not cool. So let's understand the situation. He wants the provisions of the recon. He wants them written the right way. But he thinks that people are trying to play tricky language. And it's a subject that I've covered on this channel for months. Tricky language. That's not what it's supposed to say. I, back in, uh, I think it was in July, I had a draft of the framework of the recon from the White House. And at the time, I read it on air to you, and I said, I understand why it keeps on saying generational, life change, and historic. Uh, and and they kept on comparing themselves to the great, the, the great, uh, the, the the big deal, and and everything that Eisenhower did, and 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 the people in the 1930s and 40s and 50s that'll go on for 30 or 40 years, will establish incredible programs. Uh, that's uh, that was not the language of this of this legislation. Let's understand. Bernie didn't do that. Jalapal didn't do that. Bernie said, we'll just do really good programs for one year and they'll be so popular that people want to continue them. That's what Bernie's actual quote was at the time. So that is part one of what came out with Joe Manchin today, that he, in this interview, said, I'll do the recon. The provisions I like, I've always said I like the provisions. I don't like the trickery of it, where... It's actually masquerading a 20-year program as one year when it's really 20 years. What's my impression of the situation? Uh, it is. It, it is that situation that they are tricking, they are using tricky language. I've, I've featured on this on the channel for a while, and I said if there's anyone you're not going to trick when it comes to financial numbers and how to write language, it's Joe Manchin. He's been finding tricky language in this recon for months. So why do that? Why would the White House do that? I'm not particularly clear. There's a series of interviews that showed uh, during that meeting in, in, in Delaware that the, that the President of the United States actually turned to his staff during that lunch with Joe Manchin and said, who's the buffoon that came up with this, this language? And the President, as some viewers have often said in some of the live chats, is not very... Um, on top of his staff as you would want him to. When comparing Trump versus Biden, Trump would basically call all the shots and he would basically say, this is what we're doing. You're doing it my way. I'm telling you the way. He'd actually instruct Steve Mnuchin, this is the way you're doing it. You wouldn't have Steve Mnuchin tell the president. It'd be the president Trump telling Steve Mnuchin, go do it this way. Mark Meadows, go do it this way. He'd tell them how to negotiate what provisions in there. Joe Biden, it's the reverse. It's, I'll defer to my staff, and I'll defer to the staff to figure out how it's, and he's deferring too much. And then when he goes, comes in to negotiate, the person who's been on the other side of the table hearing the language says, uh, I'm fine with you, Joe, Joe Biden. I'm fine with you, and I'm fine with you I'm wanting to do these things. But the way you plotted them out, it's wrong. Now, let's see the second part of the interview. The second part of the interview by Joe Manchin this afternoon says, I really want to do a recon. And I really want to get this out. I really want to get it done quickly. But I, the more I've gone through this process, the more that I've been confronted an inability by the White House staff to grasp that things are incorrectly done in this recon. My goodness. I mean, that's, that's what I've been saying on this channel for two weeks. I said pig-headed, pig-headed, pig-headed. I've been saying this for weeks. There is problems with the White House that are causing the problems of the recon with an inability to move. Now, I want to step back for a second, and I want to do uh, just two minutes in this recording of something that I think you and I deserve, which I haven't talked about for a while. But there's a lot in this recon that shouldn't be in there, and we all know it. Uh, and, it, you know, there is all our money in there, but there's other stuff that shouldn't be in there. And that's why the recon is as big as it was. Remember the recon was originally $6 billion, then it was $3 billion, then it was one point seven. Every time it got reduced, one provision did, get, did not get reduced. Climate. The John Kerry part of this equation with the climate has been abhorrent. 
because the climate is $550 billion of the $1.7 trillion recon. Now, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, there may be some people that say, why is climate going by recon? Even though the country wants to agree to do climate or we don't want to do to climate, if Republicans don't want to do anything for anything for climate, then we don't do climate. I mean, the country as a country has to come together to do climate. So why is climate in a recon? Perhaps the way it's written is onerous, but bottom line is there's a lot of stuff that shouldn't be in the recon. Now, I'm not saying that Joe Manchin had any opposition to the climate part of this, but I will tell you that back in May, there was a clean energy provision, which is part of climate, but it's, it's different. And Joe Manchin said, take it out, otherwise I'm not doing the recon. They never took it out for six months. And all they did was beat him up. Um, and he has a right to say no to a provision. He has a right to say no to a provision. And it, and if the provision doesn't work, doesn't work, don't, don't keep, it, keep it in there. Let me turn to Jalapal's comments. Jalapal got a phone call today from who? Joe Manchin. Okay, let me first explain why is Joe Manchin calling Pramila Jalapal? She's a House member, he's a senator, so they're not in the same body of Congress. She's a progressive, he's a moderate Democrat, so they're not in the same part of the of the Democrat Party. Why is he calling her? As featured on this channel several months ago, during the time in which the recon was in the House, the two met for the very, very first time on a Monday and Tuesday when they were about to vote on the roads and bridges of the recon. And she said the two of them got along really well, really liked each other. And she said the two got along really well. They both said they have an agenda to pass the recon. This was then, about two months ago. And that they would work through the provisions and get them done. And they had different priorities, but that they would get to the common, commonality. Very, very interesting quote. Um, understand her priorities in the recon may be different than his, but they got along well, respected each other, and they both had the commonality to pass the recon. What did she say to press today after she got the phone call for Joe Manchin? Understand he reached out to her, not reverse, and we don't have any other real indications so far of who else he reached out to today. She said, I say to him the same thing I say to press. So I'm going to say the same thing to press that I'm going to say to him. And she says, in Washington, D.C., there's very few people that keep their word. <sighs> now, who is she referring to is the question. Is she referring to Joe Manchin? Because she's talk she's asked about Joe Manchin. I mean, I read the quote as, as saying she's referring to Joe Manchin. Um, Joe Manchin has not kept his word. Let's be very clear. clear. He has not kept his word. And he has... He's trying to portray himself as a victim today, as he was clearly the villain on Sunday and will be the villain for a while. And he's trying to portray himself as the victim. I was beat up by the White House staff. They came after me. Uh, they're hooligans. They, 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 they pressure you until you try to crumble, and I'm not crumbling. He's the victim. Suddenly, oh, wow, wait, woe is me. He's the victim. Um, but Pramla says people in Washington don't keep their word. Now, here's the problem. Every one of this equation has not kept their word, except you and me. Every one of this equation has not kept their word. Pramila did not keep her word. She said she was going to block the roads and bridges unless the recon was agreed to. She, she she did not keep her word. Pramila kept a promise that she's going to put a multiple, multiple IRS stimulus check in there. She didn't put it in there on the house. She did nothing for the IRS stimulus check in that recon. She didn't keep her word. Um, then... We have the White House not keeping their word. They said they would not sign the roads and bridges unless they have both body legislation on the table at the same time. So who is she referring to? She can refer to everyone at this point. I mean, if she's just referring to Joe Manchin, well, let's just add everyone on this equation who's not keeping their word. Thank you, Jala Pramila. Uh, but what is the interesting part of where we are tonight? Where we are tonight is we clearly have two paths two mindsets, and one group that I really think needs to get their act together very quickly. And unfortunately, they are in control. And if they don't realize they're not doing things right, it's going to go wrong. Let me go with the analysis. We have Joe Manchin, who has now made his point clear. 
in clarifying his comments from Fox News on Sunday. If you miss the weekend's recordings, please go watch them. If you uh, watch the evening's countdown show coming up next, it'll be detailed. But Joe Manchin basically on Sunday said, never talk to me ever again about this recon again. I don't ever want to hear about it ever again. And I'm done negotiating. That's not what he said 24 hours before he had that interview on Fox News with no prior announcement to the White House in the less than 30 minutes before he appeared on air. He had always said he was going to continue to negotiate. We'll figure out the provisions, but I do want to pass the agenda. I do want to pass the recon. So that we have Joe Manchin now saying, "I'll do a recon, not this, not this three thousand pages, but another, but maybe a different twenty eight hundred pages, or change two hundred pages of it, or maybe you know start it over, revamp it dramatically. I will do something different." Then we have Chuck Schumer, who is doing what he should have done in May. Viewers of this channel and myself have all said since last week. Hashtag a Chuck Hall of Vote was started by this channel last Wednesday when I said all the problems we're having at hand is because Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, and Joe Biden went to some bizarre school somewhere. It's not Columbia. <laughs> Maybe it's NYU. Uh, that says never call voters if it's going to fail. Calling a vote is a good thing, folks. Calling a vote is a good thing, especially when you're Chuck Schumer and you have 20 saved up recons to 30 years from now. He has enough recons saved up to you know go to the... 20th stimulus package of, of 2025, live update from San Diego, California. He has enough for me to do that to then. So he should have called the vote back in May. He did not. He gave a concession, split the recon into roads and bridges and, and, and this and that, split the recon. It fell apart. Then he was going to call the vote in the summer. Didn't call it again because he didn't think it was going to work. Then he was going to call it before Christmas. Didn't call it again. Finally, now he had a wake up call because we've been hammering Ch Chuck Schumer. Hashtag. Chuck, call the vote. You keep, can't keep on running away from the vote. And guess what? Everyone has said that to him. And he was being as stubborn as a stubborn New Yorker would be since the summer. We had Maisie Hirono, Dick Durbin, uh, and Bernie Sanders all saying since November, you have to eventually call the vote because some legislators, a, a Joe Manchin, will just sit on a Zoom chat or sit in a live feed from a studio audience on a Sunday morning news or do an op-ed in the comfort and pleasure of your beautiful studio with the bookcases and your um, and your beautiful plush carpet and say, you know what, I don't know about the recon. It's There's no pressure because you're in a comforty little zone. Get him in an unpleasant, un a pressured position, which is on a center floor, airing live on C-SPAN and potentially picked up on this channel, of course, and, and Network News, and show him uncomfortable, sweating, people saying this must be done but for this guy. And then he says, but I do want to do it, and Brian D. sees the fault, but I do want to do it, and and uh, and the teal monster's the fault, and I'll show you how you get it done. And then everyone wakes up and says, he wasn't the victim in the show. He wasn't the villain in the show. But he may have had a lot of points and people were not listening to him. And they are equally to blame. And guess what? He can't get that message out clear enough right now because he's a senator with not, without a big press corps. And that's why this recording is different tonight. It's important for you to understand that the recon will get done. And the afternoon show right before this at 3 o'clock showed that the recon will get done because Chuck Schumer's calling the vote and we're progressing and we're going to get it done in January. But it's also important to know that what Joe Manchin said on Sunday was not this um, fatalistic sinking of the Titanic, which is what absolutely... Fox News and Tucker Carlson and two particular YouTube channels that literally, you know, um, have Steve Bannon uh, prayer rooms in their homes. <laughs> Did I just say that? Yeah, I mean, this is that's what they wanted to be. Oh, the Titanic sinking. Yes, let's go celebrate. And it has the Build Back Better Act on the second floor. Just it's sinking. They wanted that to happen, and he said it's not sinking. It's just you know, it's 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 stuck in the Suez Corral. <laughs> It's stuck in that canal like that other ship and needs to get the tugboat to push it out. So I wanted, I had to make this recording so you understand what's going on forward. It's important for you to understand also substantively what the provisions are. We have always talked about uh, the Bernie Sanders provisions he wants to add in the Senate changes. We've always talked about the provisions that, that need to be added in there for MSC. We need to always talk about the provisions that need to be modified across the board. They never got to that. 
And that has that event has not happened yet. Yet. Y E T triple underline. Because they had the JoJo reality, um, Real Housewives of JoJo airing uh, for the last two weeks. And everyone had no time to get to this, which is adding provisions in there. So what I want you to know is that everything is still on point. Now, uh, I want to do some commentary. <laughs> I haven't done any for, for the last 30 minutes of this video. I want to do a little commentary right now. Uh, the, you know. If I, if I was in the room with them right now, I'd say, okay, uh, there's about 20 things on this recon that need to go. It should never have been in the recon. Take it out and, and put the stuff in there that belongs. Omicron is out of control. People are dying. Um, people are getting contracted. If you do not have a booster, first of all, if you are double vaccinated, if you're double vaccinated, you do not have a sheet of armor around you. So get out of that fake mindset. Go get your booster right today because the double vaccination is not sufficient against Omicron and Delta uh, in the manner in which we thought it was. So please go get boosted. Massive, massive problem with the variant right now, which is causing economic disruption, which is a very nice euphemism for the economy is going to slow in growth. So all the corporate earnings are going to slow. Travel and leisure slowing. Everything is going to slow. So we're going to see less growth. Price, we're going to have less demand for prices, uh, less demand for product. And yet the prices won't come down. Oh, boy. What is that word? What is that scary word I'm about to say? Stagflation. Stagflation. Stagflation is when you have inflation, which is not going to come down yet, because you don't have truck drivers, and you really won't have truck drivers if people are wor worried to go back to work now because of, 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 of the variant. And you have massive inflation. And guess what? People won't buy more goods if they are losing their jobs or feeling uncomfortable. Yeah, stagflation is very key. So this is all the reason why you pass for some recon, to put money in people's hands not to do climate. Climate should never have been the priority of this White House. Never the priority of this White House. We were not in a climate, once in a generation, meltdown. We were in a pandemic. And Build Back Better Act was to get us out of a pandemic, not to get us out of a climate emergency. The climate situation could wait out 12 more months until we address the climate. Now, climate needs to be addressed, but did not have to be addressed in 2021. And so there's a lot of stuff in this recon that needs to come out. And... I hope that someone that's sensible in this group also says, when we're fixing all the Brian DC word game changes, Scrabble word games they're playing in Yale graduates, uh, we also remove stuff that um, John Kerry apparently, you know, uh, just stands there and says, you're never taking it out. Here's your climate star, by the way. Uh, it never takes it out because you've got to get this stuff out of there and put the stuff in there that belongs like the MSE. Like the housing, like the rent. People are going to have more problems with housing and rent than ever before. The next three months of this channel is going to be in a scary outside environment. The pandemic is already shutting down stuff left and right. You should not be on a plane. You should not be on a cruise boat. You should not be traveling. You should not be in a holiday party with 60 people who are double vaccinated because that ain't going to cut it. And... If once more people realize that of their favorite sports teams, you know, 60%, 20%, 30% are all double vaccinated and coming down with COVID, there's something wrong out there. And they don't know what the wrong thing is, but you can't risk getting it yourself. And that means pass the recon. It sort of feels like December 2020, which is, it's getting serious out here, folks. March 2020. It's getting serious out here. Now it's serious. You need to do it. And I think Joe Manchin realizes that. I, I think that Joe Manchin realizes, you know what, um, get stuff out here. And I hope the White House realizes as well. Let's turn to path number two. Path number two is Chuck Schumer. Detail a lot on the afternoon show right before this. You see how this is a different report tonight. Because I had to explain Joe Manchin's comments, and they're very confusing. Chuck Schumer's approach, which is going to be detailed again tomorrow morning, early morning's L.A., and detailed all throughout tomorrow. Um, and certainly on the next week or two, is we're calling the vote. We're calling the vote, and it helps the situation. Why? 
we now so see better than ever that calling the vote is the best thing in the world. You know what calling the vote is like? It's sort of like having um, a mediation. It's sort of like you're you're sitting down and having a kumbaya moment. Why? Because before you call the vote, you have a floor debate. And at the floor debate, I had portrayed it in, in the last 48 hours based upon the comments of Joe Manchin. Uh, that's the way he portrayed himself, as it's going to look like everyone versus Joe Manchin. Now it's going to look like everyone against Joe Manchin, but a viewer's watching on live TV and realizing uh, there's certain things that are wrong, that the White House is to blame, and they weren't to be blamed on Joe Manchin. And he just thought they were wrong, and he was not going to be the guy that was going to co-sign something wrong. And he was demonized for it. It's unfortunate. Uh, but the problem here is that the guy was doing his own bad stuff. And because he was doing so much bad stuff, it was easy to demonize him. What was he doing? Well, he appeared on Fox News, uh, too. He, 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 he embarrassed the president on Fox News. He, uh, he broke away and said, I never want to do this recon again. Well, obviously, you do want to do it. Um, which is not consistent. He ended negotiations, which you never say you're going to end negotiations with the president. Um, and he just didn't approach the situation right well. It looks like he blew up. It looks like he lost his temper and said, get Fox News on the air. I'm going right here. I said enough. Did Joe Manchin lose his temper and just sort of book this Fox News interview himself and just sort of go after it? Maybe. Did it help us? If you think about it, perhaps it did, because if the two sides are being un un uh, illogical and are not coming to a, an, a, an epiphany, and we have one side that is like a Fortune 500 company and another one that's like a mom and pop, the Fortune 500 company is going to beat up that mom and pop as much as it can until the mom and pop is just going to say, I'm done, I'm gone, bye. But what if the Fortune 500 company needs the mom and pop? Well... Uh, very strange situation. But here, the mom and pop, the small cat was Joe Manchin. The big cat was the White House, was his big press corps. And they were going after him over and over and over with press interviews and statements and, and comments. And he said they were misportraying him and demonizing him. And that was not his provision because he was staying up to language and the recon that was incorrect. Uh, that is where the situation lies. Now, some people really want to be informed on this channel about everything that's going on. Why are we not going from point A to point B? Why? What is point C to point D? They want to know what would happen in January. What does January look like? And that is the purpose of this recording. Now, the afternoon show and certainly the other shows tonight will go over each of the checks that are in this recon. We've detailed those over the last few months. But what's important to know is that suddenly we went from a universe where Fox News wanted to make it look on a Sunday morning that you ain't going to ever see a penny from this recon. And they really thought they had that interview. And then they didn't bet on the interviewee flipping after the interview and, and re-explaining himself and saying something quite different. And he did, they didn't bet on a New Yorker and a guy in purple. Uh, my message was that calling the vote is great because on the House floor, it should be Senate floor, not just you, not just C-SPAN, but broadcast media is going to see everything that is wrong in this recon. And Sunday is going to address the White House everything that's wrong in the recon that has to be fixed. And that's what happens when you put too much of stuff that doesn't belong in the recon into the recon. Remember when we talked about the second stimulus and Nancy Pelosi had salary raises for Department of Treasury. Remember that? And money for the Smithsonian Institute. Uh, what does that have to do with COVID? What does have salary raises have anything to do with COVID? And we sat back and said, this is a mess. Steve Mnuchin appear, would appear on, on broadcast news and said, I want to do these things on this recon, but you got some junk in here that don't belong in here. Is a consistent scenario with this with this uh, with certain people? Yeah, Nancy has a consistent uh, consistency of throwing in a lot of stuff that doesn't belong in there. In this case, Joe Manchin says she's trying to add in stuff there that doesn't belong or isn't written the right way. Sort of the same version again. 
And we detailed that a lot in 2020, how suddenly there was just stuff everywhere in there that didn't belong in there. Um, and Joe Manchin, <laughs> I remember the summer of 2020 when I made all those videos where Nancy was trying to give, what was it, $300 billion to state and local because she claimed the state of California was going to go bankrupt. And I just called foul for months. I just said, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. State of New York is going to go bankrupt. And Steve Mnuchin said, no, they aren't. They have fortunes. And I gave them fortunes on the second stimulus. They ain't going to go dead. Uh, no, I gave them fortunes on the first stimulus. And then we had all those third-party reports I can't, gave to you on this channel that came out and said, they may need a little bit of money, but they don't even need more than a than a than a, 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 a hundred billion. And she's out there screaming, California's going to go bankrupt, three hundred billion. And two months later, Gavin Newsom, California says we have our biggest cash surplus we've had in twenty years. So s rampant spending in the wrong place with wrong stuff that doesn't belong there. And here's Joe Manchin saying a year later. You're trying to do 20 years of money to a newborn child? Uh, what's going on here? Not an, in, not an out of the ordinary situation, something I've covered on this channel for over a year, that when the simplest provisions that could be done by executive order, that should be $2,000 the first month, $1,000 thereafter, send it out to the American people, let them figure out how to do it. Suddenly we're getting messed up with a lot of other stuff. There was um, one thing that I remember one analyst saying back in 2020. When you look at all these programs, and there's program for this and a program for that and a program for this, they're all good. But the easiest way to just do it is send out a check, a stimulus check to the American people. Because when they get the check, they figure it out. Stop being dependent upon, okay, well, if this is that and that is this, then I have my hands in fixing your situation about this thing going on in your life. No, just send out the money to the house and let the house figure out what the money is to be used for. And I don't know. I've seen from my viewers over the last year, they're sophisticated enough. They know how to spend the money, use the money, invest the money, keep the money, not use it. My viewers, if you just send them a wad of cash they can figure it out. You don't need to spend so much darn time of figuring out how to send out wads of cash. Just send out wads of cash and figure out when they're going out and how they're eligible. It is as simple as that. Uh, it is when these people can't figure out things like that that it gets into complicatedness. Child tax credit. I've had a lot of opinions about that over the last year and a half. You know, um, you have three kids and we are giving cash for those kids to get the household out of poverty. Well, just send the money to the parents. Why are we sending money to the kids? The household is in poverty because of the parent. The household is not in poverty because of the kid. Yeah. Fix the situation with the parent by giving the parent money. I've had a lot of people ask me, so the CTC mean they're gonna, the kids are gonna get the money would they also get a stimulus check? See, this is where it gets so complicated. Just send out simple wads of cash. Stop getting so invalid, convoluted. And guess who this is? One guy, lean on the wall, think about it. It's him. It's Brian DC. He has this strange thing that he was taught somewhere that if you spend fortunes on newborn children, it's going to change this United States country in the next 30 years. We don't need to be fixing the United States country in the next 30 years. We need to fix the United States country in the next 30 months. We have inflation. We have COVID. We have Delta. We have Omicron. We have a fear of now stagflation. We have slowing growth potentially on the horizon. We have lots of big industries that are big in trouble now, like travel and leisure. And 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 if you, I didn't cover it today, if I look at the stock market, if you look at evenings crypto, which is airing tonight, everything is down, folks. This is the Santa. This would normally be the Santa Claus rally of December, where everything is up, big up. Stocks are supposed to be up in in Christmas time. Crypto is supposed to be up when inflation is high. So far, we have inflation, we have a fear of stagflation, we have fears of slowing growth, and we have uh, the Fed saying, you know what? 
if this variant picks up, we are not doing our tapering. We're staying where we are. The great news tonight is that everything that I've told you would happen is happening. We're incredible family, where as a family, we learn the details and that information puts us ahead of the ball because we know what's happening often before the event happens. Back in May, we knew that the vote should have been called by Chuck Schumer. Back in May, we knew he should never split up the recon. Back in, sep in September, October, we knew that there were provisions of this recon that were not being fixed and had still not been fixed. And if they weren't going to be fixed, Joe Manchin was going to catch them and say they're not being fixed. We knew that the White House was staff was under fire many times for not doing the right things with this recon. We understood that Nancy was trying to pile stuff in this recon that didn't belong there. We understood that that Joe Manchin is not keeping his word um, often and uh, saying that he agreed to something and simply changing it. Liz Warren, who I'll, who I'll trust with the salt of the, of the earth, she says Joe Manchin had said yes, 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 and then reverted and changed his policy. Uh, Joe Manchin has have, does not have to agree to everything that Bray Sanders says, but if Joe Manchin says yes to three provisions, no to 10, he can't wake up one morning and say, I, I say no to all 13, because that's not what we've been working on for, 13, for, for the last year. And that's what Liz Warren said of Joe Manchin last Thursday. Pramila Jalapal says a lot of people in this town can't keep their word. I don't think anyone in this town can keep their word. People keep on saying, LA, run for president, run for president. I mean, I will run for president because I'll show these people how to keep their word. Because these people just don't keep their word. I mean, they don't keep their word on very simple things. I mean, I'm not talking about like the whole body of a 3,000 page of legislation. They can't keep the word on a simple thing. Uh, and if you can't keep your word on a simple little thing, Perhaps you're over-promising and can't deliver, or perhaps you are overestimating and you can't think it out, or perhaps you're trying to overburden um, someone, like a Joe Manchin, and say, you know, you do it my way or the highway. We'll kick you out of the Democratic Party. We'll do this. We'll do that. I, this, this group needs to wake up um, and then needs to wake up quickly. The, the end of someone's political career is dominated by people not understanding the situation, and not adapting to the situation. The White House currently is not adapting well. Number one, I believe, and here it comes an opinion, I believe the White House has not gotten the message clear enough about going to get a booster shot. I think that it is missing the ball on the booster shot. Number two, I think the FDA is too slow to the ballpark on getting emergency use authorization out on some new things from Pfizer and Merck. They're sitting on the table. There was all of our broadcast media today. People were wondering, these things are ready for emergency use authorization, and they, they don't even know when the meetings are being held. I would have the president come right away, get those things right out the door. Number two, um, you have not solved the supply chain issue. I think, I, I think that Mayor Pete needs to focus less upon his presidential future and focus on getting the supply chain issue done because I don't see it being fixed. LA ports are better off than they were before. And finally, you need to listen. If people say things are not right, you ain't all that. As a person who was educated in the Ivy League, I understand that some Ivy Leaguers really sometimes think that they know it all. Uh, and sometimes I act that way. <laughs> but, you know, when, you're when your entire staff is Yale, and your entire staff is Yale, and you just think you know it all, you sometimes are in a, you're in a different altered universe. And uh, the president wants to talk about diversified staff. I would have hired some staff who are not all Ivy League. I would have hired some people that don't even have an education, because that has street smarts, because then you realize, wait a second, this is not sensible. There's some, there's lack of sensibility. There's too much sort of prognosticating based upon future events from these this certain individuals and the staff that is just, it's commandeering the situation. So, recap. Very different video tonight. I had to deliver it because of the Joe Manchin comments. I had to put them in context. You understood that he is not a he has not handled the situation correctly but he's also not the demon that the white house is portraying him as and also that um no one is keeping their word in this group not just him and finally that he gives you a path to getting this done and if the white house wakes up they will get it done 
It was a year ago, well, a year ago and two months ago, October of this channel. I remember the videos. I was out there in the chair in the sun, and I said, if Donald Trump doesn't get out stimulus checks before the mail-in ballots are mailed, he's gone. It's as simple as that. You don't do this, you're gone. Mail, and I meant September. And he was $100 billion away from Nancy Pelosi. And while maybe my people, including myself, might say she would never agree to anything, maybe you should just agree to it. And had he agreed to an extra $200 billion, which was sent out stimulus checks before people started filling out the mail on the ballot, no matter what was going on, he probably would have been elect, reelected. He didn't. He became stubborn. He did not listen to what everyone and their sister and brother were saying, sent out more money. And he was gone. Now we have a White House that is being stubborn about spending money the other direction. And they're not listening about how to get things done right. Perfection is the, the cause of all demise. Don't pursue perfection until the end. Meantime, I want you to get third stimulus. I want you to get the big money under third stimulus is available. Stay with me as Evening's Countdown features that coming up next. Then we go into Holiday Stream Stimulus, our 7 o'clock show, and then our new hit runaway show. It's called Evening's Extra. It's at 8 o'clock tonight, and boy, people have really liked it. It's part of our extended programming. Join me tomorrow morning in early mornings, LA, as you see the shows go back into context. <laughs> Assuming that there's no other special report, that there's no other new surprise that is so huge that I have to uh, commandeer the entire programming schedule to cover it. Although tomorrow we have that Zoom chat. Tomorrow, Chuck Schumer and the Democrat Sanchez have a Zoom chat. Will Joe Manchin participate? The concept of the Zoom chat is to talk about Joe Manchin. <laughs> So we'll see what happens. Uh, stay with this video. It'll automatically take you to Evening's Countdown coming up next. And then it continues with Holiday Stream and Stimulus and then Evening's Extra. And with that, I want you to subscribe. This is the best channel there is, the best family there is. You found it. Together, we get through all this across the board. Make sure you get all that big money for third stimulus and get ready for that newsletter. It comes out Monday through Friday. Consider becoming a member. The link is under the video right now. Subscribe and become part of the incredible family. That membership newsletter comes out Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system and the LA Light alert system. And sign up for those LA alert system, which is free as well. That link is under the description of this video. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful evening. Stay with me as the programming continues tonight on Evenings LA, and I'll see you again tomorrow morning on Early Mornings LA. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with LA for more.